Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Marilee Prophet, Senior Program Officer for OCLC Research. Thank you for joining our webinar, Reorganizing and Restructuring the Research Library for Strategy and Value. This is the first webinar in our uh, Works in Progress webinar series. Um, we envision this as an occasional webinar series as a place for us to talk about our work and also as a place for you to talk about your work. Um, and this can be a place where we can uh, have informal presentations, get feedback from one another, um, and uh, just basically a, a venue for our partner institutions. Um, so if you have ideas for things that you'd like to present about, we'd very much like uh, to hear about that. We have two more webinars that are scheduled and more in the works. So before we get started, I have just a couple of leading, meeting logistics to cover. To eliminate background noise and make it easier to hear the presenter, you are in a listening only mode. Um, if you have any problems throughout the webinar, please submit a chat message to OCLC Research, that's me, and um, I will do my best to assist you. Uh, Jim will answer questions at the end of the presentation, uh, but please feel free to submit questions at any time via the webinar chat. Uh, to submit a question by chat, uh, you can um, access the, there's a, there's a little chat bubble that's up at the uh, top of your screen and that will open up the chat window. If you send a question to all participants, everyone will see that um, and this will make sure that uh, both, both the presenters and, and other participants can see your question. Um, uh, if people do have uh, uh, more in-depth comments to make, please send me a message and I'll see if I can um, if I can add you into the into the audio uh, portion of this of the of the webinar, um, and then on a final note, we are recording the webinar and we'll make the recording available online immediately following this uh, the webinar, so you can have an opportunity to catch any parts that you missed and uh, also share with your with your colleagues. So that covers the uh, webinar background details. So I'd like to turn things over now to my colleague, Jim Mahalko. Hey there, it's uh, Jim Mahalko. Uh, welcome, uh, greetings. Thanks for taking time out of your day to, uh, uh, to, to join this discussion. It's much appreciated. Um, so what I'm gonna do today is, is give a brief report on some investigation, ongoing investigations that, um, that, that we've been undertaking, um, particularly in regards to the ways in which research libraries are reorganizing themselves and restructuring themselves. Uh, and the idea is that uh, at the end of this webinar, the, there would be an opportunity to gather some additional input from, uh, from you uh, and the things that you might know or be experiencing in terms of uh, restructuring and reorganizing um, in, in addition to leads and, and pointers that you might provide, uh, and of course, we're always interested in your, your comments. So, uh, an overview. Uh, uh, just a, a few words about why we undertook this investigation, then I'll say a little bit about um, organizational structure, in particular, you know, some of the theory associated with uh, organizational structure. Talk a little bit about uh, uh, the, the ways in which structure and strategy and shifts and focus go together. Uh, provide a few examples. Uh, and then um, uh, some observations that, that I have about what I see happening across the landscape of research libraries as they engage in these, um, uh, in these major changes and hopefully we'll have time for uh, discussion in the way that Marilee pointed out. So why did we do this? Um, in, in particular, we did it because as we looked around the partnership and uh, across the landscape of research libraries, what we saw was <clears throat> lots of uh, reorganizing underway. Uh, and in some cases, what we saw were you know, very different, uh, often novel, uh, often innovative organizational structures being put into place. Um, we also saw uh, that uh, certain kinds of senior management portfolios are being rearranged in, in pretty radical ways. 
uh, combinations that, that, that we hadn't seen before and that were not part of the traditional library landscape. I think my personal aha moment was when Penn State University created uh, a senior position that combined special collections and the Digital Humanities Center under Mike Furlow. Uh, in, in any case, uh, we looked around the landscape and, and saw what was happening and we thought we would use that as a reason to reach out and ask who out there was reorganizing and restructuring. And we actually got 60 institutions right, writing back saying, oh, we're doing it. Um, uh, now, uh, when we found out a little bit more, some of it was just normal course of business kind of uh, uh, reorganizing, but, but some of it was very much major, major restructurings. Uh, and I want to tell you what I learned from interviewing some of those people who were willing to uh, willing to tell me uh, in depth about their uh, their local activities. Uh, before I do that, though, let's let's talk a little bit about charts and structures and organizations and, and some of the, the the theory because I think what you'll see is that some of that theory is actually playing out in the choices that people are making in in their restructurings. Uh, uh, one of the um, one of one of the really wonderful uh, organizational charts is one of the earliest ones that's known um, uh, to exist, uh, at least within the United States context. And it was it was done um, for the New York and Erie Railroad back in uh, 1855. And uh, I urge you to take a look at it. It's it's a it's a, 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 a beautiful document. Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, zoom in and out of it right, right now, but but the, the, the reason to bring it up is uh, in, in, e even in this earliest of organizational uh, structures and 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 uh, charts, uh, what what you saw was uh, an attempt to have the organizational structure follow uh, a, a local strategy. In this case, the, the the railroad was getting drubbed because they were far less cost efficient than their uh, than their their rivals. And what they did was reorganize around uh, trying to change that 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 cost effectiveness balance. Uh, and and a big part of what they did was was to actually centralize a variety of resources that had that, that had been consumed across the railroad, but had been devolved down to the level of station agents. So you had station agents. You know, ordering up railroad ties, hiring laborers, et cetera, um, you know, at, at, at significant cost, whereas uh, uh, organizing that in a central fashion allowed them uh, to, to have the custom agents worry about whether or not the, the, the trains were running on time and whether the passengers were, were comfortable uh, while those central resources got managed in a more cost-effective way. Anyway, I'd urge you to check it out, and, and it suggests, you, you know, the, this link between uh, be between uh, structure and uh, strategy. Uh, so one, one of the things that, that, that uh, we, we said when we reached out to chat with people was uh, was to find out whether these uh, reorganizations that they were doing um, were were what, what, what was the root of these these reorganizations? You know, was it a, a, a cost? Uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a cost motive. Was it uh, uh, was it a, uh, an efficiency motive? Was it uh, you know a customer motive? Uh, did they have a strategy, and was the structure that they were putting in place following the strategy? Um, now, um, it turns out that um, uh, in in general the answer was yes, but but um, the the, 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 there's a, a, actually a broad literature about uh, organizational structure and its relationship to strategy, and it's worth just saying a little bit about that uh, uh, theory of organizational structure, uh, because as I say, I think you can see how some of that is is playing out in uh, choices that are being made now. Um, so, um, one of the interesting things. Um, uh, about the theory of structure is that uh, most of our uh, most most, of or, most organizational structures um, are actually the uh, the kind of concatenation of all the past 
roles and activities that an organization had undertaken. Um, so, uh, you know, at, 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 its, at its fundamentals, an organization can be very, very simple. Um, but as, uh, uh, as you change, uh, what happens is you change the structure, but you don't actually get rid of everything that had, uh, had been part of the prior structure. So you, so you wind up getting layers um, uh, that, that, that exist within any individual organizational structure that are, that are echoes of and remnants of the, uh, the, the way in which uh, the institution had, had previously been configured and echoes of the, uh, the activities that, that the institution had formerly uh, tried to advance. Um, so, so I guess in library terms, you, 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 most organizational structures are really uh, a palimpsest. Um, uh, you don't, you know, the underlying stuff isn't really erased. You you, you still see um, bits of what, uh, what had been there in in its history. Um, now, almost all organizational structures, uh, in, including the ones that that uh, I had a chance to to look at and and to talk with people about. Um, uh, are, are incredibly complex, um, uh, and I mean, if you reflect on your own circumstance, I think you, you'll you'll see you know how that that plays out. Uh, most organizations start simply, you know, uh, you, you have a strategy, but you have residuals that you stick on even after you've changed things, and before you know it, it leads to complexity. Um, in general, where does organizational complexity come from? Uh, usually, it comes from growth. Um, so we we have more to handle, so we spin off uh, another group to deal with it. Uh, or um, uh, we've gotten good at what we do, and we're going to enter a new market. So you create an entirely new structure to handle and inter interact with that new market. Um, or you decide that uh, you're good at business X, so you're going to get into an adjacent business, um, and that causes even more complexity. Um, and in that regard, I think it, it, it's useful to reflect about uh, reflect on the new services that libraries are uh, both anticipating and beginning to uh, to implement. Think about uh, data management, or think about research uh, support. Uh, uh, mechanisms, or think about uh, you know faculty engagement uh, 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 centers, um, uh, the, the, the mass digitization uh, in, in a local circumstance. There are all of these kinds of businesses that go beyond our traditional collections-oriented library activities uh, that, that 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 are likely to, to create changes to the structure in order to accommodate them. Um, and in, in that sense, libraries aren't going to be any different than other businesses. Uh, we're going to make, we, we, we think we will be simplifying, but we will also be adding some complexity because we need to respond to either, you know, volume markets or adjacent businesses. Um, now, uh, there's, a, a, there's an interesting um, uh, uh, concept in, in organizational structure, which, of course, they've elevated to the status of a law, um, the, the law of requisite variety. Uh, what, this, what this refers to is that, um, that as, as you uh, deal with your constituents, your customers, your clients, um, you, you almost always um, proliferate the number of groups that you deal with. Uh, you, you, this is called expanding market share. You, you try to get you know, more and or adjacent clients and customers. Um, uh, or you realize that you could serve your client base in, uh, in a better way if you, uh, if, if you divided them up in a more granular fashion and understood them better. Um, so the, 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 the classic example of this is, is the way in which marketing has driven the, um, the, the proliferation of entities to be served. So you know, imagine, uh, I'm in the food business, 
Uh, and you say, well, I, I've got two markets. I have adults and children. Well, and before you know it, um, you start segmenting that in, in ways that make it, um, uh, uh, that lead you to um, tailor your products to uh, more and more granular uh, portions of that adult market or that, that, that uh, uh, ch ch children's market. So suddenly it's not a, a children, it's not a child, it's a teenager with a microwave, uh, you know, or it's Hispanic mothers with small children, um, et cetera, et cetera. And when you, when, 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 you, when you begin to think about your constituents that way, your customers that way, almost inevitably you change the entities inside the organization to deal with these smaller and smaller segments. You, you want to be... You want to be particularly responsive to those to those uh, uh, identified segments. Uh, so it makes you responsive, but but it results in more complexity in the structure. Uh, so structure does follow strategy, uh, and it has some uh, built-in drivers that 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 lead it towards complexity. Uh, it's also useful to to remember. Uh, Organization charts are not necessarily organization structure, and structure is not necessarily an organization. Um, um, I mean, if you think about all the all the bits that have internal components that have to come together and be aligned in order to deliver uh, on an institutional uh, on, on an institutional mission, uh, you've got lots more than just uh, aligning the structure. Yeah. As this McKinsey diagram suggests, you've got um, um, you've got to have the people, the rewards, the processes, the strategies, all translating into you know the behaviors that that drive you towards success, uh, and, and and that create a self-sustaining culture, uh, and, and and that lead to successful performance. So you, we're, we we got to remember even even if we are uh, good about making choices and designing new structures, uh, we've, we've got to pay attention to the alignment of all of these other elements if we're going to have an effective uh, institution uh, at the end of that restructuring <clears throat> and reorganizing. Um, now, and the final thing I would submit uh, to keep in mind uh, that, that's happened in the business world, and, and you see the echoes in, in, of it within our own circumstances in the library world, is the, uh, uh, the emergence of customer-centric organizations. Um, uh, over the last 25 years or so, um, businesses have designed their structures around the, the customer. Um, uh, the, 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 they've they push their business processes to the back and push the customer-oriented units to the front. Uh, and you can see how this aligns with that requisite variety law. I mean, you, it, by doing this, it allows you to concentrate on the micro-segments of your constituency. I mean, it, it allows you to respond to those people who are driving your business on. And I, I, I think you can see analogies uh, to this in uh, the library organizations that are emerging now uh, that are aligning themselves uh, along the uh, along the the lines of the client base that that they're uh, they're designing to uh, to serve uh, now this is this this is this is consistent this customer orientation uh, as, the, as the final component of organizational structure refinement is consistent with um, an observation that, that we have been making uh, uh, and, and based on uh, the Hegel and, and Singer um, uh, argument of, of many years ago about what's happening to uh, the corporation uh, as, as, the, as it is reconfigured by the network. Um, you know, what, what, what Hegel and Singer uh, have said is that you know corporations used to be a bundle of essentially three components, um, and um, uh, they were you know customer relationship management, product innovation, and infrastructure. Uh, you had to have all of those things to uh, house within the corporation in order to be successful. Uh, 
didn't mean that that you you did all of these things equally well, but you had to you had to do them within the enterprise. Uh, 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 and, and and their argument is that uh, as the network has disintermediated things, it's allowed corporations to align themselves with one or another of these uh, formerly inseparable three components. Um, so you can have a company that just is about delivering infrastructure. Um, that you think, think about um, uh, uh, Amazon Web Services uh, uh, as, a, as an example, uh, or a company that's only about product innovation. Um, and there's a lot of those kinds of companies here in Silicon Valley who, who, who never come to the front. Um, uh, they rely on, on others to deliver their products, uh, people who've made, it, made their business customer relationship management. Um, uh, in, in, in any case, um, for the, uh, as, as organizational structures have become more customer-centric, the, the network has reconfigured the way we do business and the way we interact with our constituents so that we can become more customer-centric as well. And what you see in a lot of the uh, in, a, in a lot of the uh, restructuring that's that's going on is um, people uh, aligning themselves around a, a customer-centric structure uh, uh, to be able to deliver uh, the, the, uh, the the tailored services to those uh, to those local constituencies. Um, so let, let's take a look at a couple of these that I think are particularly interesting. Um, the University of Kansas. Uh, this is their uh, 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 their organizational structure uh, for the libraries uh, from uh, about 18 months ago. Uh, I think this is this is uh, really interesting. Um, it's it's a, it's it's part of a pattern of both from a chart standpoint, it's part of a pattern of moving away from the uh, uh, from 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 the box and grid kind of uh, hierarchies. Um, uh, it's also, I think, um, um, a, a good example of that customer centric uh, design that that, that 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 we've seen as the one of the major uh, principles for uh, for restructuring. Uh, and here's a couple of pieces that I thought were worth calling out. Um, now, you see, they, they, they've, um, they've called out and put together a number of units under the rubric, the Research and Learning Division. Uh, and if you look at that, they, these, are, these are wonderful examples of those kind of micro-segments um, uh, uh, of, of the constituency. Um, so you, you've, you've got these centers who are tasked with being responsive to undergraduate, faculty, and staff, or, or uh, uh, more and more often you see um, you, you know, community, uh, affiliation, community and affiliate kinds of, uh, of targets as well. Now, they've all got a different micro-segment uh, that they, they need to reach out to, but they've been pulled together into uh, uh, an operating division because they uh, ha are inevitably going to have characteristics uh, that, that are similar one to the other um, in, in terms of delivering their service. Um, the, other, the, the other reason to pull all things together this way is it, is it allows you to you know, monitor um, you know, progress, um, uh, and it allows people uh, who are engaged in similar activities uh, you know, to inform one another, challenge one another, and and raise the level of play for uh, for the entire uh, uh, research and learning division. Um, the other thing that I thought was 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 interesting here was the way that they pulled together uh, an innovation and strategy uh, uh, group division. Uh, and, and and here uh, the the motive w was that there's an innovation and need across all of the operating units within the, the libraries. It needs specific attention. It ought to get managed. It ought to get monitored. It's a central, it's a, it's a central good uh, that everybody ought to be able to rely on and benefit from. Uh, and therefore, you, you, you pull it out, 
and, and, and you can explicitly support, uh, support it as well as uh, monitor it. You know, finally, I, I point at the cross-functional initiatives uh, that, that were arrayed across the bottom of that uh, uh, chart. Uh, I, think, I think the acknowledgement that uh, you're going to inevitably have uh, uh, things to be done to respond to the micro-segments that have a beginning and an end and cut across, uh, a, a, across all of the operating units um, it, it, it is an important acknowledgement. And, and, and you ought to manage those kinds of initiatives uh, as, as projects. Uh, they ought to be given the same level of, of, of uh, exposure um, as, as ongoing activities. Uh, so these three things I thought were particularly interesting about, uh, about the University of Kansas. Uh, this is another interesting redesign around the customer at the University of Delft. Um, they they didn't get the memo about the uh, about the the the, the, the egg shaped uh, diagrams, but but they did get away from the hierarchical uh, grid and uh, 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 that, that that's been traditional. What they what they did do is they they pulled together what we what what they do uh, and what they deliver as a set of business lines. Uh, and on this next slide, I think you can see them just a little bit better. So uh, they pulled together uh, a, a set of things and, and called them library products and services. And, and within that library and library products and services group, uh, you, you have a, a set of things that actually uh, are managed uh, in, as, as business lines. So um, you know, look at the range of, uh, of, of people associated with managing their open spaces. They want to manage their space as a valued product, something for which, uh, something for which people will give them credit and, and which will support outcomes at the, at, at the institution, uh, research data services, document management, et cetera. Um, so pulling all those together in a, uh, uh, in a way that allows them to be managed as, as business lines in charge of important assets. Uh, the, other, the, other, the other thing I point out there is the, is the way that they brought together the, uh, the library development. Um, uh, now, when they say development, it, this, this is not running a local system, or et, et cetera. This is, this is actually about um, uh, doing um, system investment system investigation, design, and, and development. Um, and, and again, it's a, it, it's a, a, a good that is uh, consumed across the, the enterprise, so it's brought together in a way that uh, allows it to be explicitly managed and uh, monitored. You know, and finally, my favorite part is, is, the, um, is the director um, who, who, who doesn't actually have an organizational bubble. She, she has a cloud. Uh, and what she told me was that she has, she's represented that way on the chart because she floats around. She actually doesn't have an office. She just sits down wherever there's space on, uh, every day. Um, so um, those, I think, are, are, are really prime examples of, uh, <clears throat> of, of, of innovative restructurings that we're seeing um, Lots of echoes uh, throughout uh, the, the partnership and research libraries more generally. Uh, okay, that said, let me give you just a few observations after having uh, talked to um, so, so many people. And first of all, I, I'd observe that uh, everybody that I spoke to did say that they were changing their structure in order to support a change in strategy. Um, they, they, they wanted and needed to uh, uh, adapt uh, uh, to changed circumstances uh, and, and, more importantly, to changes in strategy. Um, almost all of the restructurings and reorganizations were motivated and triggered by some external event. Um, I didn't talk to anybody who said, well, it would be a good idea to just reorganize. Um, uh, Rather, there were external events that got them going. You know, for instance, the, 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 the university 
itself may have articulated a new strategic plan, uh, and they organized themselves around uh, making more direct connections to the support of that uh, strategic plan. In other cases, uh, it could have been more mundane and just opportunistic. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the university uh, designed and announced an early retirement program. And because the library was such a heavy uh, uh, participant in the early retirement program, it created a, uh, it, you know, a reason and an opportunity to, to make a change. Um, in terms of defining characteristics, almost all the reorganizations in, were, were intended to make them more user-centered. Um, they, they, uh, uh, you, you can see it in the, in the language associated with the, with the units. Uh, you can see it in the, uh, in, in the uh, titles of uh, individuals and, uh, within the units. Uh, clearly, uh, and, and, and explicit alignment to uh, address the user needs. Um, the, other, the, the other clear articulation was that uh, folks intended that these restructurings would allow them to align themselves uh, very directly with some university established directions. Um, and in some cases, you know, I saw the emergence of departments within the library that were named after uh, the directional goals set by the university. Uh, uh, so at the University of Manitoba, there was, for instance, within the library, uh, uh, a, a center for the advancement of, uh, uh, for, for the, Aboriginal education. Uh, the university had said that is what they were going to be good at. They were going to be the best at it in all of Canada, and the library tried to align themselves to, to help deliver on it. Um, libraries also um, used the change as an opportunity to bring in new skill sets that were outside of the normal library package. Um, um, you know, to, to be as user-centered as they desired, to be as aligned as, as they would like with the university's direction, they needed uh, to add new people with new skills. Um, uh, and finally, um, one, one of the things that uh, emerged uh, pretty universally across all of the, the restructurings that I saw was that there was an effort to um, charge a senior manager with responsibility for managing external services that they were going to rely on. In some cases, that might have been you know, a consortium or uh, partnerships, et cetera. Um, but, but it was the equivalent of, um, of uh, in, a, another, in a different kind of business context, uh, supply chain management. Um, you weren't building everything yourself. You were managing a lot of suppliers, and you needed somebody to take responsibility for that, and, and uh, uh, because it was so important to your to your success. Uh, uh, and th and that's that's actually, uh, I think, uh, 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 something that's echoing across all of research libraries. Um, and we. I think it's been said, was said very nicely by Wendy Luger uh, uh, a year and a half ago during an ALA uh, forum uh, when, when she suggested that what was going to characterize the, the, the library within the research uh, institution in the future was going to be uh, in alignment with local priorities, local infrastructure, uh, and, 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 and to focus on unique institutional assets. Um, and that uh, libraries, uh, research libraries as a system, were going to share infrastructure, share assets, uh, and, and would have collective goals and priorities uh, uh, together. Uh, and, and you see that emerging in the, in the appointment of people who are charged with managing those, uh, uh, I think, is, is, is evidence that, that we're well along uh, this direction. Um, uh, 
if you think about the, the, the layers of, uh, of, of shared infrastructure, shared priorities that are beginning to emerge, I mean, you, you see it in, uh, uh, in, in, in lots of different ways. Um, these are just a couple of, uh, of, 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 of those kinds of uh, explicit acknowledgments that the delivery of local value is going to be tied up not only with how well I manage locally, but how well I manage relationships and partnerships. Um, and that also showed up in, in the recent ARL um, strategic uh, thinking initiative. Uh, and I don't know if you've had a chance to see this, I, uh, but, but one of the unique things that they did in that, in that process um, was they, uh, they, they, I can't remember the exact numbers, 69 or thereabouts, uh, strategic plans from both the library, the university, and the Office of Technology at the university. And, and they ran all of those plans through um, uh, uh, a uh, uh, processor in order to try and see patterns emerging by virtue of words and phrases that were shared, et cetera. Uh, and one of the things that I thought uh, they, they haven't released the data set yet, but but when they do, it'll be uh, it'll be really interesting and fun to to, to play with. Um, but but I'm drawing attention to the extent to which collaborate and partnership were shared uh, uh, ideas across not just library uh, plans, but across university, IT, and and, and and library plans. So this is clearly a direction in which. Uh, uh, our, our domain is moving. Um, finally, my last few observations. Um, the uh, you, you see people putting in place uh, new services. Uh, those new services, you, you know, come from uh, a, a, a short roster. Uh, of candidate services. Think about data curation, or think about data, data management, uh, or think about researcher reputation management, or <clears throat> think about uh, digital preservation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now, people are overtly bringing on people to, to, to deliver those new services. They're foregrounding those new services within the structure. Uh, but 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 people are making different local choices. So everyone may feel that they have to have some kind of support for data management, for instance. Uh, but some some uh, libraries will it will be a core service. It will have significant funding, significant numbers of staff. Um, uh, it will be a feature of the value that they hope to deliver. Other institutions may say, "Yep, data management. Um, we've got a, we've got a person. Um, they'll give you some advice, um, and that person may be buried in some other part of the the library enterprise because they're foregrounding a different kind of service. Uh, so, so we'll, we'll see this service array kind of held in common across uh, institutions, but but the specific gravity." of that service will be different from institution to institution, you know, how, how well it's funded, how high up in the, uh, in, 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 in the foregrounding it appears. Um, and I think, actually, that, that may delay in some ways uh, the emergence of communities of practice around these new services. Um, uh, we, we don't have a settled terminology. The folks who are doing the same work aren't called the same thing. You know, the criteria for and experience that we expect in order for them to discharge those responsibilities is still, you know, uncertain. So we're we're still uh, some beats away from a community of practice emerging. Uh, and finally, uh, the the things that I I gleaned as essential to successful restructuring and reorganization. One is that all of the all the people who seem to have done it successfully articulated in advance of any choices uh, a set of principles, the, not just design principles, but 
but things that they felt were uh, uh, commonly shared values or, or values that they wanted to be commonly shared across the, the library organization. Uh, they said those in advance, and then they were able to use those as hard choices and structures were being uh, were being designed, and they could they could uh, they they could filter them, they could uh, bolster them by referring back to those uh, to those principles. Uh, everybody uh, had their management both up and down aligned in advance. Um, so the the senior administrators at the institution knew what was going to happen and and you know were well informed and the senior managers within the, the, the library domain you know were also well informed uh, and that, that created a, 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 a foundation of trust and support that allowed people to move forward and do some of these innovative and or difficult uh, things uh, People were good about about communicating um, uh, again, both up and down. Um, and the thing that I think w was was particularly uh, was the thing that I would not have particularly thought about is that all of them had some kind of master space plan already uh, uh, and and you know on the shelf ready to be uh, uh, implemented. Now, didn't didn't mean that that they 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 were going to have the money to do things, but that master space plan meant that they had an embodiment of directions that uh, that they'd already agreed upon. Um, and and between that space plan, which was very concrete, and and and, and the principles, it gave them touch points uh, that that allowed them to, uh, uh, to to arrive at final designs. So. Uh, just to wrap up, what we're seeing, uh, I think, very clearly are reorganize, re reorganizations and restructurings that are being done uh, in order to align the library with changes in the way research and education is being done, to align themselves explicitly with university directions, um, and to ensure that the library is responsive to uh, uh, the, these expectations uh, and to these uh, uh, micro constituencies uh, that that are uh, so important on the on the campus. Uh, I, these are institutions who were particularly generous with their time and explaining to, to to me what they had done, sharing documents, et cetera. Thank you very much to them, um, and 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 thanks to you for uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, I think we've uh, left enough time that we can catch up on a few of your comments, some of your uh, leads uh, for things that we might uh, explore further. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, uh, thanks for, for listening so far. We have um, one question uh, from Roger Schoenfeld. Um, I know that there uh, have been perhaps some audio issues. And I apologize for that. We have been recording this, so um, if there are portions that you missed where the audio dropped out for you, uh, then you can refer to the um, to the to the audio recording. Um, Roger's question for Jim is uh, the debate about whether assessment and innovation and strategy should stand alone as at KU or be infused throughout the organization as at several other ARLs is fascinating. I hope you'll reflect on that. Yeah, thanks, Roger. That, no, I agree with you. I, I, I think that is interesting, and um, and I think I think uh, you know I've, I've worked in other organizations where you know that urge to oh you know we're all in sales uh, for instance, or we're you know we all need to be innovative. You know, I, where that that gets to be in in, in, in you know, sort of an in, in easy throwaway line. Um, uh, so, so I, you know, I think the best of circumstances would be where um, you have somebody manage a process that results in that kind of diffusion, cultural change, and then you, and, and then uh, you know, they move on in a way, um, and, 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 and 
to the you know to the next thing that requires uh, attention. So I, I'm agreeing with you. There is a tension between the the design choices, um, and and I suppose depending on the relative maturity and the culture of your institution, one or the other approach might be uh, you know a better fit. Um, another uh, question from Roger: Can you say more about the specific gravity communities of practice idea? Uh, just, well, just a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm interested in in this and, and trying to look into it a little bit more. So, um, if, if you think about, I mean, pick pick one of these kinds of emerging services. Uh, Let's say uh, data data management re research data management plans. Um, you got multiple libraries who say, "Oh, you, you know, we're prepared to uh, to help or to be a central uh, uh, organizing uh, uh, entity, uh, you know, on the campus." Uh, and, and like I said, some folks when they when they say that they're they're investing heavily in it. And, and they will bring on people, you, you know, who are going to uh, going to deliver on that uh, on that on that goal. Uh, in other cases, you'll find people who say, "Yeah, we do data management, and it's part of so and so's uh, you know responsibility portfolio." Um, and and it may be just enough, you know, it, it may be what's wanted at that particular institution. They, they, they need some light coordination, and a single individual can do it. Um, but that, but that individual is going to be buried uh, as part in, in, in some some broader uh, organizational unit within the library. So what you got is is uh, an urge to respond to the same need with similar kind of services, uh, but but the the the, the funding, the skill set. The you know the 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 extent to which they're core to the way the library views its value on a campus are all going to move that service up or down in the array in a very different way, uh, and and that's only partially related it seems to me to to the uh, to the uh, community practice uh, problem. Uh, you know that single individual who's going to do the light coordination of data management plans at one institution, um, you know. How do they find their community of practice uh, at other institutions? Who, who are their peers? How do they how do they come together to uh, uh, to build a community of practice? Um, I mean, I think these structures will emerge, but right now we're at a point where uh, I can't tell if you do the same thing from your job title. Uh, I have to know a lot more about you. Um, and, and, and we're at a point where we, we're, we're not going to come from a shared experience base either because we haven't, haven't figured out what the qualifications are to successfully do some of these jobs. So all I was pointing at is, is it, it's early days and, you know, the kinds of communities of practice that, that we've, you know, we've grown to rely on in, uh, in librarianship in the past have yet to emerge around some of these, uh, uh, these, these new distinctive services. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the in the uh, in chat. If anybody has any, I'll give you a moment to compose them. Um, Jim, I, you might check your chat separately to see if there's uh, any anything in your in your chat. Um, uh, so Roger has um, a, another question in here. Uh, I'm very I'm also interested in where the library reports into. And what the director's title is, uh, vice provost versus dean versus vice, pres vice president, reporting to a provost's office, institutional effectiveness or elsewhere. So, did you look at um, where the where the library plugs into the larger structure? I I, I did, but I didn't do it systematically, and uh, and it's 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 one of the things I need to go cycle back and and look a little bit more carefully at. Um, Roger also wants to know because he missed the cup the first uh, few minutes if there's a slide deck available 
um, or, or paper that's citable on these topics, and uh, I think the answer is you haven't written this up formally. I think there were some blog posts that were perhaps right, right. forthcoming, and but the slide deck will definitely uh, make available at, right after this, um, along with the recording. So thanks for thanks for asking that, Roger. And, and for, for for folks who uh, may have uh, leads or would like to point me at uh, uh, examples that that they think are uh, uh, interesting, uh, I, I'd, I'd love to have that kind of. Appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. You could uh, uh, post those in the remaining minutes that we have, or um, or just email those to to Jim or to to me directly, and I'll be sure that I get that to uh, to Jim. I'm not seeing anything in um, in the chat right now. Roger had another question about or comment about uh, being interested in where the library reports. Here he is. Sorry. <laughs> Such a fascinating question that we want to answer it twice. Um, so I think that uh, not seeing any more any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and give you back the remaining nine minutes of your of your day to use as you choose. <laughs> um, uh, just to recap, we will uh, post the slides um, and post uh, the um, uh, post the recording. And please do feel free to share this with other other colleagues. Um, this concludes our first. Uh, um, works in progress webinar and um, we hope to see you back here for another one. Please send along your um, uh, suggestions for, uh, for other directions that we should head in. Thank you.